everybody, this is Peggy from May Arts Ribbon, and tonight I want to show you a scrapbook page and a card that I d did using the core impressions. This is the uh, coordination card stock, but it already is embossed for you. This particular group, it's basic gray, and it's the Whimsy Collection. Now, here's the really funny thing. I looked at this pack, and I thought, oh, I just love that page that they did in there. Well, I decided just to recreate it. My son, who's an artist, said, Mom, don't try to rec recreate the wheel. Just go with it. So, that's what I did. Let me show you what I did. Here is my page. Can you see that okay? Let me see if I need to back the camera up a little bit, maybe. I don't know, maybe there. There you go. There's my page. How stinking simple is that? And I just added a little bit of uh, ribbon to the bottom from May Arts. This particular one is 355-10. Isn't that awesome? I love this. I think this is probably, you know, I want to say it's about an inch and a half, maybe an inch. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's just an inch. I'll have to look that up for you. This was so simple to put together, and I want to show you how easy it is to sand this paper. I used the Coordination's little... Uh, sanding block that I got once before from them and I love it. There's a little one so if you're doing little pieces you can use that size or if you're doing the larger piece like I did here you're going to use the bigger side. And then they sent me this time, for, May Arts sent me this little dust buddy. This was pretty cool. I got, I got to figure out how you clean it once you use it but look at all that. That's the dust that was on the pages that I did that normally is all over my hands and then all over my apron and it picked right up. So that was a pretty cool little tool. Well, let me just clear some things here and show you how quickly you can put this page together. Now, I've gone ahead and cut everything out ahead of time because I didn't want to bore you with that. And I'll have all the instructions on May Art's blog so you'll be able to see that. A little hint, if you use a craft mat at your work area like I do, do not sand anything on top of there. You will ruin your craft mat. So I'm just going to use the back of my pad here and again just use this. I just want to show you how cool... Look how easy that is to, uh, to sand. And I just love it. And then when you do that, you bring in this little handy dandy buddy, dust buddy it's called. And I'm just going to open it up and then I can just wipe that right off of there. And it takes all that extra dust. Now the one thing I'll tell you, it does have a little bit of a smell to it, but I think if I leave, it was in that package, I think maybe it'll go away. I hope so. So there's one. So I'm just going to go ahead and sand all these. I love the pink. Now, I'm not a pink person, but check out how great this one. Actually, I should be using the little one. It would be easier for me. Look at that. Let me bring that in a little closer. So see, it's already embossed. I didn't have to get any embossing folders out. I didn't have to get out my cuddle bug or my big shot. It's already embossed for me. Now, in this particular pack, there's four different designs. One's called Simon. One's called Cotton. The dot line. And this one's called... Uh, sarsaparilla, the one that I have here, the little circles. The one I did before this green one was called cotton. So they give them little names and you'll be able to figure all that out. So let me just sand this real, get, real quick again for you and show you how quick I put this page together. Now these squares were cut 3 by 3 because I am going to do a 12 by 12. <clears throat> Excuse me. However, I don't know if you found this to be true in any of your paper, but when I get my base 12 by 12 Depending on the brand, I've never had that problem with basic gray, but depending on the brand, sometimes a 12 by 12 isn't really 12 by 12. So that I had to trim these down a little bit because the paper that I used for my foundation or my base uh, was not basic gray. It was just a textured paper I happen to have. I love this brown with this like reddish coral color that comes through. Let me get that off of there so it doesn't get all over my paper. Oh, it does pick that up. Nice. Look at that. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that little tool. All right, so that one. And then this is the dotted line one that I'm going to use, and it comes out with like a teal. Teal is a real popular color right now, it seems. A lot of things I'm seeing, everybody's using teal. So there you are. Look how easy that did. And then I'm just going to take my little dust buddy and wipe up all my dust. Wipe off my piece of paper. All right, let me clear this off, and we're going to assemble this page. Well, we are ready to assemble our page. Now, what I did, I had some extra strips of the black and teal, so I just cut it to give a border here, and I'm just going to use my ATG gun, and I'm just going to go right to the edge. Now, on my original one that I did, I did run it over to the sewing machine and did a little etch etching, a little stitching on there for it, 
Uh, I won't do that for you because you don't need to see me sew on my sewing machine. You know how to do that, maybe. And yes, it's the same sewing machine that I use for sewing fabric because I don't make tailored clothes. I just sew. And if I need to change the uh, needle, well, then I'll just change the needle. All of my things I have are tools. So, so there's that part. So there's that. Now, what I did here is I kind of eyeballed, because I don't know if you've watched any of my other videos, I do not measure um, most of the time. Because, again, this paper was not a 12 by 12. So, and I know I cut these pretty darn straight. So I know it's got to be the base paper. Let's see, maybe we'll go. Hmm. All right, there. I think we're going to go there. So we'll just tape that. I'm really excited. I, I guess some of you might be wondering, boy, she's had to make, make two of those pages. Well, I have seven grandchildren. And years ago, I used to make everybody their own individual page, which meant, yes, seven different ones for the same occasion. And at Christmas, we pull out all of the books that I've done, and the children sit and look at them, at their books. Everybody has their own. Well, one child said, I don't have a page like that. That ended me making seven different ones. I started making everybody's page the same, and um, it worked out just fine, so nobody felt slighted. So there you go. I'm going to stick that right there. Now, it's hanging over just a smidgen here, so I'm just going to take my scissors, excuse me for reaching, and I'm just going to trim that right off of there. It's not a big deal. And we're going to trim down the side of this one. And then the final thing to do on this one, well, not really the final, the next thing I'm going to do is to add my ribbon. And again, this is 355-10, and it's the polka dotted, and I'm just going to run a piece of adhesive right across there. And then I will put a piece of scotch tape on the back, and I'm going to leave a little bit of a opening there, like that. And just for now, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of adhesive there, just because I need to. And we'll put, I better turn that around, I'm not doing it the right direction. All right. A little bit. And there is my next page. What do you think of that? How quick was that? I didn't have to pull out any embossing folders. I didn't have to run it through any kind of embossing machine. Boom, it's done. Well, let me clear this off. I want to show you real quick how to put that card together. Well, let me just show you how quick I put this card together. Is that too stinking cute or what? And again, I used May Art Ribbon. And this one is DD... 10 and it's 5 8 inch wide and then I just put my little sentiment at the bottom but on this one I just took a piece of cardstock and again I will put the measurements on the blog for you and I'm just going to adhere this down right in the center I didn't use the coordination paper for the back of this particular one um, because I kind of was letting the ribbon take the the front lines there just line up that side it goes straight across like so I already taped these and we're going to put them, um, let's see, I think they should be all the same. I used a, uh, let me reach over here, Marvy. And I don't know what size square this is. I'll have to measure it. I'm not very good with measuring. I'll be real honest with you. And then we're going to put that one going that direction. And then we're going to put this one here. And this one goes right there, like so. All right. Voila! Now, here's the fun thing. If you haven't seen this before, I'm going to show you real quick. There's a knot that I do, and it's called the Naomi knot, only because I can't remember where I learned it years ago, the lady's name, so I named it Naomi. And it gives you this really solid, nice background inside your card. And it doesn't you don't have to worry about it sliding around. So, all you do is you poke a hole in your card wherever you want to tie your knot. So, let's say I want my finished knot to be right about there. And I'm going to poke three holes because that ribbon is a little bit wider. Then I'm going to take the two open ends of my ribbon from the inside to the outside. Stick it through that hole. Then I'm going to wrap it around my card like so. And I'm going to pull until I get it tight. And if the back isn't straight, you just twist your ribbon until you get it straight. So there is the inside. Are we seeing that okay? How about that? Okay, then you take one under the top and one under the bottom, give it a little pull, like so, and we're going to tie a knot. 
I normally don't tie a bow when I do it this way on cards especially because I don't like to have to have them hand stamped. I'm, I'm a weenie. I like to do a knot and then it doesn't seem to be as big. Trim off your ribbon. There you go. I might have done that a little bit too long. Let me do that again. Well, okay, and there's my card. What do you think of that? Pretty stinking cute, huh? Just squares. It's already embossed. All I had to do was sand it, cut it down, stamp your sentiment on there, and you've got a card. There's one more thing I wanted to show you before I go. They also have neutrals cardstock. Now, this is not embossed already. This has a really nice texture, so you would have to have an embossing folder, but I wanted to show you how nice it embosses. Look at that. Isn't that wonderful? And then my thoughts are, I have this ribbon, of course, or lace is, oh, I didn't write the name down. I'll have to look that up for you. I apologize. I'm going to make a flower with this and put that on there to give it that vintage shabby chic kind of a look, kind of a deal going on there. Anyway, you'll get, you get the idea how you can make a flower with this. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, well. That is everything I can show you tonight. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Make sure to hop over there to mayarts.com and check everything out and tell them Peggy sent you. Have a good one. Bye.